this time of reflection, this time in which we will come and hear word from our church mothers as they help us to understand this road that leads to Calvary. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears. The Son of God discloses. He walks with me and he talks with me. And the joy we share, the joy we share as we tarry there, none other known. Can we stand together? I come to the garden alone while the dew is still the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the sun of God
Hallelujah. 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 I can't hear nobody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other have ever known. Matthew, Luke chapter 21. Hear the reading of God's word. 2022, Luke 22. Now the feast of unleavened bread, joy and nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then enter Satan into Judas, subnamed Iscaiah, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and the captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covered to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him until betray him until them in the absence of the multitude. And he sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. And he sought opportunity to betray him. Allow that to just resonate. Judas Iscaiah sought opportunity. He covered it to give them money. The high priest covered to give money. And Judah sought opportunity to betray him. Oh, Judah. Sole opportunity to betray him. Spirit of the living God, for friends on me, Spirit of Spirit. Spirit of, come on, Spirit of, hallelujah. Help 
me, melt me, mold me, mold me. Come on, feel me. Feel me. Come on, spirit. The living God. how we are tonight. Even me, Lord. Even me. Come on, what we want to do? Let some trust now church, even me, Lord, even me, Lord, everybody come on, even me, oh, bless God, even me, Lord, even me, oh, yeah, 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 thank you, Lord, let Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. I said, Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. Since we're here, Hallelujah, yes. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Come on, have your way, Lord. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for Calvary. You wouldn't come down from a cross, but you stayed there to save us tonight. We submit this service into your hand. Have your way, Heavenly Father. Come on, everybody, have your way, Lord. We sense your presence here. My God, yes, Lord. My God, yes, Lord. My God, thank you. Yes, Lord. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. On this Tuesday night, we praise your name. God, we praise your name. We rebuke the power of the enemy. We tie up state of pain. Lord, have your way, Lord. Bless every speaker that will speak tonight. Use them for your glory. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Tonight our hearts turn to all of the victims of crime. Lord, have your way. The family of the man who was pushed in front of the subway, 52 years old, Lord, have your way. The police officer that was doing his job was killed through insensitive, reckless act of a person, Lord, have your way. The collapse of the bridge in Baltimore, Lord, have your way. The terrorist attack in Moscow, Lord, have your way. 
turmoil. But I still believe God. God is still in charge. Tonight we are so grateful as we are moving towards crucifixion and then towards resurrection to have some of our lay leadership our brothers and sisters that live among us and serve us to stand as they stood last night what a fantastic job our deacon minister did didn't they do wonderful newly out of their gate of public speaking to us and now our church mothers some of them are veterans in doing this but we believe God has impregnated them with the word amen, amen. amen. we're we'll going to begin with sister mother Virginia will be our first following by mother Jennings second Barbara Jennings and then one I know gonna talk to us Mother Doris will conclude us they will come now with our hymn after the selection
to Calvary, a mother's perspective. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Bless you. My name is Mother Virginia Campbell, and it is a joy and with gratitude that I extend warm greetings to our esteemed Bishop Edwards, along with his dear wife, Lady Edwards, our dedicated ministers, faithful deacons, nurturing mothers, diligent missionaries, and cherished friends of Christ. Greetings. Let's open with a prayer. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, we ask for your presence to be with us. Open our hearts and minds to receive your words. Help us to understand the depth of love and sacrifices demonstrated on Calvary, particularly from the perspective of Mary, the mother of Jesus. May this sermonette lead us to a deeper appreciation of your grace and inspire us to live lives worthy of the sacrifice you made. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we embark on a journey to Calvary, but we do so through the lens of a mother's love. Mary, the blessed mother of Jesus, stood at the foot of the cross witnessing the agony and suffering of our beloved son. As we reflect on this experience, let us also contemplate the profound implication of Jesus' sacrifice for each and every one of us. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 35, reveals that Mary understood her son's divine identity when the angel Gabriel conveyed to her, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Imagine the awe and the wonder that must have filled Mary's heart as she received this extraordinary message. She knew that her son was not an ordinary child, but the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world. As we journey with Mary to Calvary, let us not forget the significance of Jesus' sacrifice. He willingly endured the agony of the, Christ, of the cross so that we might have eternal life. His blood was shed to cleanse us from our sins and reconcile us to God. It is a sacrifice born out of pure love, love so deep and profound that it surpasses all understanding. But let us also remember Mary's faithfulness and devotion. Despite the pain, she remained steadfast at the foot of the cross, a symbol of maternal love and strength. In the darkest hours, as she watched him die, she clung to the hope that God's promise would be fulfilled. Today, as we reflect on Mary's perspective, let us also examine our own lives. Are we willing to follow Jesus to Calvary, to embrace the cross and all that it represents? Are we willing to lay down our lives for the sake of others, just as Jesus did for us? May this journey to Calvary lead us to a deeper understanding of God's love and a renewed commitment to live lives of sacrificial love and service. And may we always remember the words of that hymn, King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be, lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow. Lead me to Calvary. God bless you. I forget yes lest I forget lest I forget thy love for thee lead me lead me to Calvary 
more time oh, 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 oh. less I forget get set money Greetings, everyone, in the name of Jesus. I would like to give honor to my pastor, Archbishop C. Nathan Edwards. Thank you so much for this opportunity to have this time to express something about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I took this from Matthew, um, the 26th chapter, I'll be reading verses 1 through 5. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people, unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Siaphas, and consulted that they might take him, Jesus, by subtility and kill him. But they said, not on the feast days, lest there be an uproar among the people. So for the scripture. Jesus seemingly had been out with his disciples, and he had been teaching them many things and things to come, as usual. And when he departed from the temple, his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. But Jesus shared with them many things. He said, you know that after two days in the, is the feast of the Pan Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box with very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Can you imagine you sitting down eating and someone walk in and start pouring oil on you? But how did she know where Jesus was? He was in this person's house and she came there. We don't know the woman's name. We don't know how she found out where he was, but she did find him and she came. And she didn't wait for him to be in a more comfortable position. As he was eating, she poured the oil on his head. Well, the, when the disciples saw it, they was really indignant. And they said, to what purpose is this waste? It could have been sold for much. But then Jesus understood. He didn't even know why she was pouring this on him for a moment, but then he understood her purpose. And when he understood his purpose, he said to them that don't bother this woman, don't trouble this woman. She did this for my burial. The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples asked Jesus where they should prepare for him to eat the Passover. He said, go into the city and tell such a man, the master, say, if my time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Can you imagine Jesus just sending someone to your house to say, you know, I'm coming to your house and I'm bringing all of my friends with me. But <laughs> that's exactly what he did. He came and he came to the man's house. And 
While he was there, he was saying to his disciples, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, yes. even unto death. Yes. He came to Geth Gethsemane, and that's where he just wanted to pray to his father. So I am thinking that Jesus was sorrowful, that he really didn't want to die, because remember, he was born in flesh as we are. So therefore, he had emotions as we would have. And he was very sorrowful, even knowing that his death was approaching. So he came to Gethsemane, and he told the disciples to tarry there with him. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he told them to wait there. And I guess that he wanted to be sure that he was going to be protected, that nobody would come for him, uh, sneak up on him, and you know, do something to him. So he got his friends. And you know how we have friends. They tell you, I'll be with you through the thick and the thin. I'll be with you whatever is going on. So these was his friends. He thought that they had his back, you know. They was going to watch for him. But he went away to pray. He went a little distance from them to pray. And he prayed, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And after he finished praying, he came out and found his disciples asleep. Anything could have happened. They was asleep. They had no idea what was going on. He says, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? So he went away again the second time. He prayed, oh, my father, if this cup may not pass except I drink it, thy will be done. After praying the second time, again came out and found them asleep. These were some true friends. <laughs> he went away the third time to pray, saying the same words. The third time he said to his disciples when he came out and found them sleeping, sleep on now and take your rest. The hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Judas came with a great motive. Well, backing up. Judas had gone to the high priest and whoever and asked them how much would they give him in exchange for showing them who Jesus was. And they offered him 30 pieces of silver. So now Judas is ready to put his plan into action. Judas said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. This was the sign that it was Jesus. In that same hour said Jesus to the multitude, are you come out against me as a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you in the temple and you laid no hold on me. So, you know, why do you feel it's necessary to do all of this? So after they did take Jesus, Judas tried to return the money but they would not have it. They said it was blood money. So Judas went out and hung himself. And the money was, they said it couldn't go back in the treasury, uh, that that was blood money. So they used it to buy a field to bury strangers in. And the field is called the field of blood. They took Jesus to the governor, Pontius Pilate, where he was uh, seated in the judgment seat. Um, but his wife said to him, I've had a dream about that, and I wouldn't do nothing to that man if I were you. And she, he listened to his wife, and the governor washed his hands. He said that he would have nothing to do with whatever happened with this man. And then they was going to release a prisoner, and they, uh, he asked, who should I release, Barabbas or Jesus? So they all shouted, release Barabbas. And then they said, 
that let his blood be on us and our children. And so, you know, that's a, a, a heavy thing to, um, to say, to let this be on your children. Your children don't even have nothing to do with your decision that you made, but you're making this decision and bringing judgment on your own children. So we need to be careful with what we think for ourselves and not place it also on our families. So basically, that's about it. Thank you so much. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain. He was at white as snow. They're going to give the final selection. Jesus, Jesus. Just paid it all, all to him I own. Sin have left the crimson stain. He was his wife. Drop the nails in my hand Laugh at me where you stand Go ahead The day will come and you will see They will come and you will see it's not me. Cause I ride, cause I ride again. Ain't no power can turn me down.
Nathan Evan and Sister Edwards. I'm so glad to be here tonight. It's an honor, Bishop, to be here tonight. That was just a word. I'll tell you that is just a word tonight. I'm going to say this. I'm coming behind some great speakers tonight. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just feel like getting up and going home right now because I tell you, I can't even match what they got to say. I can only stand here and I can give glory to the Lord. I mean, you said, you just put it, no death can keep us down. You know, the Holy Spirit even said to me today, think not what you're going to say because what the Spirit is going to say to me. I will tell you something. Jesus. <laughs> she, Jesus Christ came to fulfill the purpose of the Lord. It was spoken of him before he was born. And all through the times, even coming out of of going to Jerusalem, riding even the donkey. Yes. He was all the fulfilling where he was going to the cross. Right. He was going to Calvary right then and there. Even when he was, I say, 13 years old. You know, when they get 13 years old, they do the bar mitzvah. They become to be young men. Right. He knowing then that he was going to Calvary. It was spoken of him, I would say like this, in the cross. He came to fulfill the law, yes. and that's what his purpose was. All these things was done. And as I said that the prophet in Matthew 10, 19 said, don't worry about what I would have to say or what I should say, for it shall be given to me and what I should say in the hours and what I should say. So for this reason, I should speak only those things what the Spirit of the Lord have given to me. As I said, Christ did not come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill the law. 
Let me calm myself down because that was, hey, that's a, see, that is just a, a Holy Ghost thing. He is the Maka, Maka, thank you. He is the coming Messiah. He is our Lord and Savior. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. He did not say he would supply our wants, but he will supply our needs. Which food, clothes, and shelter is our needs. We can ask him for any things, and he will give it unto us. He forgive our sins. Even when he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. They did not even know that they was killing our Savior, our Lord and Savior. Even those that went with him, traveled with him, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Matthew, all of them traveled with him, but they did not even know who he was. They even asked, who is this man? He even asked his disciple who traveled with him, who did they say that I am? They said that he was the son of David. They said that he was the prophet of Nazareth. All these things that he said, they said about him. But then he asked the question, who did you say that I am? And the Holy Ghost, huh, the Holy Ghost spoke to Peter, said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood did not tell you this. But only God could have tell you that. Yes. So the Holy, the Holy Ghost is the speaker. He's the spirit of truth. He do not come to speak of himself, but he speak of the things of God. He is the spirit of truth. And I will say this for y'all. Christ is a healer. He is the deliverer. He came to set the captive free. He also is our supplier, we must trust him. We say we believe in him. He teaches us all things. And he do, and if we do believe in him and we do trust him, he will lead and guide us into all truth. I hear some people say, I, when I found Jesus, Jesus was never lost. Jesus was never lost. He always been with us. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. I will be with you always, even till the end of time. And I want to say I thank you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight to speak. You give me not what, what you wanted me to say, and I thank you for it right now. Even though I came behind great speakers, God, I thank you for blessing them. I thank you for keeping them. I thank you, oh God, that you watch over our bishop and our pastor and his family right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessing and keeping them into all things. God, and directing them right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Mother. Let me say this. Hallelujah. Let me say this, in the midst of um, post-modern era, where the cross is not easily defined as it was. In fact, there are some people who have uh, dismissed the cross. We as the Christian church, particularly Baptists, we don't wear the crucifix because Jesus came down from the cross. But we still uphold the cross because the cross 
It's a symbolic symbolism of the suffering and the shame that Jesus did for us. And so tonight, I want to sing a song before the group come to sing the final song. And I want us to stand. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Because there are people that are dismissing the cross, that are reducing the cross and placing it in a closet somewhere. But I want to be near the cross. So as we stand, we're going to sing that as we affirm that there's still power in the cross. Though it may be the expression of suffering and shame, if it wasn't for that cross, we would not be saved. So we're going to sing that for the Lord, celebrating the cross. Jesus, keep me. Jesus, keep me near. Come on, there. Up just found it. Come on, free, free to. Healing string flow, flow. Touch. Oh. 
be delivered tonight. Come on, Joe. Tomorrow night, the Lord bless you. 6.30 tomorrow night.